Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Greg Wilpert in Baltimore. President Trump announced on Thursday via Twitter that trade negotiations with China have stalled and that he will now impose a 10% tariff on $300 billion worth of goods imported from China. At a rally later in the day on Thursday, Trump said the following. I just announced another 10% tariff on $300 billion worth of Chinese products that come into our country. The fact is, China devalues their currency. They pour money into uh, their system. They pour it in. And because they do that, you're not paying for those tariffs. China's paying for those tariffs. And until such time as there is a deal, we will be taxing the hell out of China. That's all there is. The announcement came as a surprise to financial markets, which plunged worldwide immediately after Trump's tweet, with the Dow dropping by over 700 points, for example. China responded by saying that it will retaliate, but it did not specify how. Meanwhile, the IMF estimates that the U.S.-China trade war will reduce global economic growth by at least 0.1%, and international trade growth and business investment have stalled because of the trade war. Trump has long said that his main objective is twofold. On the one hand, he wants China to make it easier for U.S. companies to invest in China without giving away their intellectual property. On the other hand, he wants China to commit to purchasing more U.S.-made goods in order to reduce US -China, the U.S.-China trade deficit. The U.S. and China have almost come to an agreement last June, but faltered over China's unwillingness to change its approach to intellectual property. Joining me now to discuss the U.S.-China trade war is Michael Hudson. He is Distinguished Research Professor of Economics at the University of Missouri, Kansas City, and Professor at Peking University, and uh, recently met with China's Academy of Social Sciences. His most recent book is J for Junk Economics. Thanks for joining us again, Michael. Good to be back here. So let's start with what Trump claimed, which many have already criticized, but it bears repeating. That is his claim that China is actually paying for the tariffs and not U.S. consumers. And, um, but if we end up paying more for Chinese products because of the tariff, is there any basis for this claim of Ch uh, Trump's that the Chinese are paying this tax? And what purpose does this tax serve anyway, other than to pressure the Chinese? The, uh, it would only be true that China pays if China firms would now uh, reduce uh, the prices they charge uh, to Americans by uh, the equivalent of 10%. In practice, this would be 30%. It would only be true if China uh, would operate all of its export industry at a loss. And of course, that's crazy. No, no country would do that. Uh, China certainly wouldn't do that. Uh, Trump is pretending uh, that uh, Americans will not pay this price. He's pretending that uh, prices in this country will not jump by one or two or three percent, and there are going to be a lot of shortages as uh, imports simply stop from China. So, uh, and basically, what he's trying to do is blame China and blame the foreigners for the fact that a lot of Americans are really hurting. They're not doing better, uh, they're not earning enough to break even, they're going further in debt, and uh, Trump is really saying, uh, it's uh, not our fault, it's China's fault. Don't blame uh, the financial mismanagement, don't blame the corporations, blame China. <coughs> and he pretends that they'll pay instead of, of course, Americans are going to pay. When you levy a tariff, uh, the prices are going to go up here. Americans will pay more. Uh, uh, the demands he's making on China are nonsensical. No country is going to give away their economy and uh, abolish uh, their socialist economy, abolish everything and say, all right, we're going to become an American satellite. Uh, we're going to follow uh, Thatcher and Reagan policies and let America buy all of our companies out and uh, uh, push us back into the 19th century opium wars. The opium wars are over and so is Trump's uh, trade war. So this is nonsense. But there's another reason that uh, Trump is doing this. Uh, and that's because he think, he has something in mind that most people just don't even think of. And that is that the American uh, budget, uh, government budget, uh, is uh, running up deeper and deeper debt as a result of Trump's tax giveaway 
to the 1%. And so he says, how am I going to uh, shrink the budget deficit? He says, I know, I'll make my constituency pay. That is, the, the, uh, the people who voted for me. I'll make labor pay. If uh, I can raise uh, taxes on Chinese, 300 billion of Chinese imports by another 10%, that'll be altogether, I think, uh, uh, 20%. That'll yield $60 billion to help uh, solve the budget deficit that might give away to Wall Street uh, and uh, the wealthy corporations is uh, uh, created. So uh, it's all uh, a diversion so that people won't look at what's really happening, but they'll look at what uh, Trump is saying. And I don't think, as people find that they have to pay higher prices, I don't think they'll believe Trump. I think he's lost all credibility. That's why the stock market's collapsing. They're a gas. They think even Trump can't get away with this big a lie when it's so obviously false. Yeah, I think that's a very interesting point about uh, where these taxes might be going. I was already, I already mentioned though the short-term consequences of this trade war, which is lower investment, less trade, and lower economic growth. But what are the long-term consequences for the U.S. of this uh, trade war? Well, it's a war not only against China, it's a war against uh, the entire world. Uh, uh, Trump has just in, recently uh, stepped up the war against Russia uh, uh, a few days ago when the Senate uh, agreed to uh, penalize uh, countries that uh, help fund Nordstrom, like uh, Germany. He's, he's gone to war with the EU. He's gone to war with Germany. He's gone to war with Venezuela, gone to war with Iran and Yemen. Uh, he's turning, he's gone to war with the entire world. So uh, the long-term consequence is uh, uh, China and Europe and Russia and Iran will draw much closer together and uh, America is going to be left isolated. That's what an isolationist policy is. It isolates America. Uh, and uh, Trump is doing it. And uh, this is going to mean that America is going to have to fall back on its own resources. Well, Trump's pretense is that, well, now that we uh, have tariffs against China, we can restore manufacturing here. But there's no way he can bring manufacturing back because it's already gone. And uh, it takes years and years to rebuild factories, to put in infrastructure. And America basically is already so overpriced because of, of the cost of health care alone, not to mention housing and uh, 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 debt. So uh, uh, he's, he's locked America into an austerity program. And uh, this austerity program is going to get deeper and deeper uh, over the next year or two. Now, if the effects of this, these tariffs are quite negative, as you point out, uh, isn't, wouldn't that be an argument in favor of free trade then, uh, in favor of neoliberalism? What's your reaction to, to that notion? No, uh, free trade uh, is neoliberalism. Uh, there, what Trump wants is not free trade, it's controlled trade, it's telling other countries what they have to import uh, and, uh, uh, from us and what they have to export to us. Uh, colonialism was uh, free trade. Uh, there's no way that America now can engage in free trade and win because we're a high cost economy and we're not producing. If we're not, uh, if we're not producing manufacturers, there's no way in which a change in currency values is going to shift production to the United States when we don't have any factories to produce manufacturers. Uh, it, it, you have to look at the structure uh, of world trade and you realize it has nothing to do with tariffs at this point, nothing to do with currency values. It, it's to do with the fact that uh, Wall Street and the corporate uh, uh, employers have jumped ship, they've moved abroad, and uh, they've hollowed out uh, the United States. And once it's hollowed out, uh, the only way you can rebuild it is to have public infrastructure, to have public subsidy, just like China's doing uh, and uh, other countries are doing, uh, uh, public health, just like other countries are doing, to cut the costs to employers. But now that America, and especially uh, Trump, but also the Democrats, want to privatize everything, from healthcare to infrastructure, uh, we're going to be priced out of world markets, whether, whether it's uh, free trade or not. Now, finally, what do you expect the Chinese will do, uh, assuming that the U.S. and China do not come to an agreement very soon? Nobody expects them to come to an agreement. They think that uh, uh, America has made such outrageous demands that they surrender and become an American colony that uh, they've, they've given up on America. They do not expect uh, uh, there to be a rapprochement. They are turning uh, uh, closer to Russia and to uh, Europe 
But uh, basically what they've said is, well, you know, we've been producing, our, uh, using our factories to produce consumer goods for Americans. It's time we begin using them to produce consumer goods for the Chinese. So they're going to uh, raise their own living standards. They're going to produce more for their own population. They're going to uh, develop much more trade with Europe. And now that Europe has seen that uh, America is trying to interfere with its trade with Russia, uh, its oil trade, and, uh, uh, and is trying to get uh, Germany to, and Europe to join the war against Iran, they're saying, okay, uh, the, the whole post-war uh, unity with the United States is over, we're now going to be part of Eurasia. So Trump has sort of sped the parting guest. Uh, he's, he's driven uh, uh, Europe, uh, Russia, uh, China, and Iran uh, together. Uh, and uh, I joked before that he should get the peace prize for that. He's unified the whole world outside of the United States. I think that's a really very powerful point. And on that note, we're going to have to stop here, though, for now. I'm speaking to Michael Hudson, Distinguished Research Professor of Economics at the University of Missouri, Kansas City. Thanks again, Michael, for having joined us today. Thank you. It's good to be back. And thank you for joining the Real News Network. Thanks a lot for watching. Appreciate it. Uh, but do us one more solemn favor. Hit the subscribe button below. You know you want to. Stay up on the videos.